The theory of evolution, a very childish, immature and silly theory um, that was put together by a very intelligent man by the name of Charles Darwin. And to prove his intelligence on his deathbed, he renounced his theory and turned to Jesus Christ because he was afraid of what was waiting for him on the other side. Very wise choice. The theory of evolution is merely based on breeding pigeons. Charles Darwin looked at the different breeds of pigeons and he theorised that by selective breeding you can change the shape of a particular animal, which is correct. Uh, you can do this with dogs, you can do this with all sorts of animals. You can decide, well I want to breed a dog with longer legs or bigger teeth um, or larger muscles or I, I want to breed a pigeon which I'll call a tumbling pigeon or whatever, make them with bigger chests, long, bigger wings or something like that. However, it doesn't matter how many times you inbreed these deformities into these animals to get the shape that you want, one thing continually remains true and cannot possibly change. In the book of Genesis, we're told that God made each animal of their own kind, each of their own flesh. So regardless of how many times you interbreed pigeons, they remain pigeons, just a different shape, and their flesh is still pigeon flesh. And you can prove this with roast potatoes and peas for your Sunday lunch. Same applies with dogs. If you breed dogs, you can get all sorts of shapes, but none the same. The flesh remains the same. It's still a dog, whether it's a chihuahua or a doberman. It still has the flesh of a dog. You could breed a million pigeons, a billion pigeons, ten billion pigeons. You'll still end up with a pigeon. You won't end up with an elephant. You can breed as many fish as you like, but you'll never turn a goldfish into a seal or a dolphin, it will still be a goldfish. It will just be a different shape. The same thing applies with humans. You can mix and match selectively. Oh, I fancy her, I fancy him. None the same. The result of the offspring will be a human being and the flesh will be the flesh of a human being. That in itself disproves the ridiculous theory of evolution which is clung onto tenaciously by those who refuse to acknowledge God. Why do they refuse to acknowledge God? Because they are afraid, just like Charles Darwin was on his deathbed, of what was waiting for him on the other side. Oh no, what if there is a God? What if there is a hell? Well, there is a God, and there is a hell. And the Holy Scripture tells us that the sin of the world is unbelief in Jesus Christ. Belief in Jesus Christ is what leads to forgiveness of sins and salvation. But some people do not want to believe this. Others though already believe this and don't want you to believe this. Hence they try and force down your throats absurd theories, such as the theory of evolution. I decided to make a theory myself and call it the theory of devolution. Because if you look at the ancient world and you look at the great structures which have been built in Egypt and many other great cult ancient cultures around the world, you'll find that these cannot be replicated even to this day. So therefore, that would mean that the human race has somehow regressed since a few thousand years ago. We have devolved and become stupid. Not so again. We've always been the same. All of these structures were not built by human beings. And more and more evidence of that is available all around the world and always has been. And this also is denied by those who tell you that the theory of evolution is true or else. They're trying to force it down your throat because they know it's completely unpalatable. Even scientists, real scientists I'm talking about, 
agree that the theory of evolution is absurd. It cannot possibly be. So the next time someone says to you, the theory of evolution is real, say, well, you prove it then, my friend. How about you breed pigeons until they turn into elephants? And when they do, come back and tell me, and then I'll believe you. Until then, please give it a rest. The theory of evolution it's just a silly theory. And the people who believe it are either liars claiming to believe it and knowing that it's not real or they're gullible. And the book of Proverbs says, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. That is a definition of a fool. Someone who does not believe in God. And it also says that unbelief in Jesus Christ is the sin of the world. Don't join in that sin. Believe what God told you. Not what Charles Darwin told you and then changed his mind. And then other people, even to this day, um, are arguing with Charles Darwin because Charles Darwin has rejected the idea himself because he's afraid of God. The wisest thing he ever did in his whole life was repent of that ridiculous theory. And that is also the wisest thing that anyone else can do. Because the sin of the world is unbelief in Jesus Christ. Don't be a part of that sin.